So, uh, welcome to the course of basic electronics. Uh, this is the fourth lecture on the topic of digital electronics and uh, the content for the today's lectures are as follow. First, we will talk about the mean terms and max terms. Then, uh, we will discuss about the sum of product and product of sum representations of a Boolean function. And then I will introduce the concept of Carnap map, K map. Okay. We shall be talking about 2, 3 and 4 variables K map. Okay. So, let us start. The mean term, mean terms are defined as follow. Let us say that uh, we have a variable x. Okay. So, x can be represented either in its original form x or uh, it will be x bar the complement of x. So, complement of x is represented in this manner and it may also be represented like this x prime. Okay. So, a single variable may take either 0 or 1. So, there are two possible combinations, I mean there are two possible states for a single variable. Okay. Now, let us consider the two variables x and y. So, if I have two variables x and y, then there will be four possible combinations with x and y if I uh, consider the variables in its original form and in its complement form. Okay. And what are those uh, four, what are those four uh, possibilities? If I perform the end of these two, if I perform the end of these two variables, then uh, I can write the four possible combinations and those combinations will be x bar, y bar. Okay. Please note here x prime means uh, it is x complement, complement of x, x bar, y bar. We can also write x bar, y or x, y bar or x, y. Okay. Can I write it? With two variables, if I perform the AND operation, there will be four possible combinations x dash y dash or x dash y, x y dash or x y. Okay. Similarly, I can do the same practice for th three variables. For the three variables, there will be eight possible combinations. Okay. So, these combinations which are product of the different variables are called mean terms. Okay. So, this x dash y dash, x dash y, x y dash or x y are called mean terms. Okay. Similarly, uh, let us do the practice for the three variable. For the three variable, if we choose three variables x, y and z, then the possible combinations for, uh, for three variable x, y, z and uh, they, then there, there are eight possible combinations, those are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and finally 1, 1, 1. Okay. So, for all uh, 8 combinations, we can write the mean terms, terms are in the first case it is x dash, y dash, z dash 
please note here the x represent 1 and x dash represents 0 ok. So, the combination here is 0 0 0 therefore I write x dash y dash z dash ok and for uh, similarly for 0 0 1 I will have to write here x x uh, prime y prime z for this I will write x prime y z prime for this combination I will have to write x prime y z then x y prime z x y prime z prime then x is it correct x y prime z prime then x y prime z then x y z prime and finally x y z so all these three all the all these eight combinations are basically mean terms which are formed using three variables x y and z okay and v represents mean term the representation the general representation for mean term is m sub j where j is the equivalent decimal value for that particular digital number Okay. So, in this case this term will be given a name that is called m0, this one to be m1, m2, m3, m4, m5, m6 and m7 and so on. Okay. So, this, this, this is the representation m uh, mean terms are represented in this fashion m 0, m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4, m 5, m 6 and so on. Okay. Is it clear? Similarly, you can write mean terms for 4 variables. If you choose 4 variables, there will be 2 to the power 4 mean terms. Okay. And you can similarly uh, designate those terms like m 0, m 1, m 2 to m 15. Is it okay? Now, similarly, I can also define the max term. I can also define the max terms and max terms are defined in a uh, uh, different manner. What we did here, we do the R op and operation uh, for the case of mean term, but for the case of max term, we will perform the R operation. Okay. And R operation means uh, if, I, uh, if I write the terms here then this 0 0 0 will be represented as x plus y plus z. Please note here when we write the max terms the x represents 0 and x bar or x prime represents 1 unlike that of the mean term case where x refers to be 1 and x complement refers to be 0. Okay. Is it clear? So, the max term for this combination is to be x plus y plus z, whereas for this case it will be x plus y plus z bar uh, z prime, then for this case it is x prime plus it is x plus y prime plus z and uh, for this case it will be x plus y prime plus 
z prime okay similarly you can write for all eight possible combination okay is it clear what we do here we just perform the r operation with three variables and write all eight possible combinations those eight possible combinations are basically called as max terms so here x plus y plus z and x plus y plus z bar x plus y bar z x plus y bar z bar and then x bar plus y plus z all are max terms for the three variable x y and z okay and these are designated in following manner basically we write the symbol capital m sub j for the max term okay where j is again the decimal equivalent for that number so if i uh, write here if i designate this x plus y plus z it is to be m0 then this one is to be cap m capital m 1 capital m sub 2 to finally it go to capital n sub 7 okay so these are eight max terms for the three variables x y and z okay now let's take one example now uh, please note that these uh, mean terms and max terms are very important and what we can do any boolean expression or logical function can be written in terms of the mean terms or max terms okay and if you have the table the truth table for a boolean function so from that boolean function from that truth table you can directly write the boolean function in algebraic form in terms of mean terms okay using the mean terms getting my point let's do one exercise let's do this for a simple r gate case okay so for the r operation we have two variable let's say that these two variables are x and y and you know that the function r function is basically x plus y okay that you know but let's say that you don't know this okay and you only have this truth table so truth table uh, will have four possible combination 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 okay and uh, corresponding output you already know this r function we are talking about and the corresponding function f is for 0 0 it is 0 for 0 1 it is 1 1 0 it is 1 and 1 1 it is 1 okay so i can write this function the r function using the mean terms how can i write i can write just by observing just by collecting those mean terms which refer a function 1 okay that means what you see here the 0 1 combination refers the function to be 1 1 0 refers to be 1 and 1 1 is referring to function 1 okay so let me collect all these function and uh, let me write here f equal to the function in this case is this mean term is what this mean term is x bar y is it or not because this is 0 1 x 0 means x bar y 1 means y so f is simply x bar y plus the second term that is x y bar because it's also referring one so x y bar plus finally x y because it's also giving us one okay so what we did we just collected all those mean terms which were resulted in the output one okay and written the uh, and then perform the r of all those mean terms first mean term is x bar y i did x bar y r x y bar then the another mean term is x y so i finally perform r with that x y okay so this truth table the function which was there in the truth table can be written algebraically 
in term of I mean uh, utilizing the mean terms. Is it clear? Okay. And then you will see that if I uh, simply uh, I mean uh, apply the theorems of uh, the Boolean algebra, I can reduce this, uh, I can make uh, this function very simple and it simply be x bar y plus x y bar. Okay, let us try to simplify this x bar y plus if I take x common here, then it becomes y bar plus y. You know that y bar plus y becomes 1. Okay, so this is x y plus x. Then we have a distributive law which says that if the x plus y z, I mean can be represented like this x plus y into x plus z. I just given this formula in the previous class. Okay. So, you can apply this distributive law here and you can write here x plus x bar into x plus y. x plus x bar is again 1, then we finally get x plus y. Okay. So, that is why in uh, uh, when we uh, perform the R function of the two variables okay, and if I have the truth table, so from that truth table I can write the function in algebraic form. Similarly, you if you are given any uh, truth tables for any numbers of variable, okay, you can make this practice and you can directly write the function in this manner. Is it clear? Okay. And because you see that uh, the, if the number of variables are more, we will have more uh, number of uh, mean terms. So, writing those mean terms like this is always going to be difficult. Okay. So, an alternative uh, uh, form of this representation is developed. Okay. What we can do? We can write this in this fashion only, f is to be summation that that indicates the r operation of all mean terms and then the mean terms this is x bar y x bar y means 1 m0 m1 okay so m1 can be simply written as like this 1 this is 2 2 and this one is 3 so i can write it like this okay this is called the sum of product form of a function, sum of product form representation of a function. Okay. Why sum of product? Because these are the products of the variables and then finally we perform the R operation. Okay. So, this form is called sum of product forms. Okay. Is it clear? Now, what we can do? Even I can write the same function in terms of product of, uh, in terms of max. I mean, using the max terms. Okay. Here I uh, use the mean terms to write this function. Similarly, I can uh, let me uh, utilize those max terms to write this function. Okay, let me take the complement of this function f. So, complement f is written like this. When I have to write the complement of a function, what I should do? I should find out the mean terms which are resulting in into a 0 output. Okay. I will collect only those mean terms which are giving rise to 0 at the output getting my point. So, in this case you see there is a only one mean term which is giving 0 at the output and that is x bar y bar. Okay. So, the complement of this function f dash is simply m 0 r it is x bar y bar. Okay. And what do you do when you take a complement of a function, 
I mean, if I if you take the complement of this f bar, what you will find? You will find f again. What I do? I take the complement of the complement from the uh, theorems of the Boolean algebra. Okay, this complement of complement of complement of f gives us f. Okay, and if I write here, then the complement of this f dash is nothing but capital M0. Okay. I mean the complement of Mj mean term is a max term that is written in this form Mj. Okay. If I take Mj prime or Mj complement, it becomes capital Mj. Okay. So, if I take the complement of this M sub 0, it becomes capital M sub 0. Okay. And what is this capital M sub 0? If you remember the truth table and representations for the mean terms and max term, it is x plus y. Is it or not? It is the same x plus y. Okay. So, you see here that a function can be written either as a sum of mean terms are as a product of max terms. Okay. A function, since here there is a only one max term, it is not uh, very obvious. In the next example, we will take more uh, max terms okay. and this statement becomes very much clear. So, now let us take an example which is based on three variables x, y, z. and let us try to write the functions in term of in terms of mean terms and max terms. Okay, the following truth table is given for the three variables x, y and z we have three combinations 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 and then finally 1 1 1 and what we we have two functions given that one is f1 another one is f2 and the truth table for the f1 is it is 0 1 then double 0 1 double 0 1 and for f2 it is 0, 0, 0, then 1, then 0, then triple 1. Okay. This truth table is given to you. What you have to do? You have to write the functions f1 and f2 algebraically using the mean terms and max terms. Okay. So, first you can do the exercise uh, with mean terms. Okay. What this f1 is going to be? I can write f1 by Ring all those uh, mean terms which are giving rise to 1. Okay. So, the first mean term which is giving 1 as a, I mean which are responsible for 1 output is 0, 0, 1. So, 0, 0, 1 is basically x bar, y bar, z. Okay. So, I will write here x bar, y bar, z plus then I will find the next one in the table. So, next one is here that is for 1, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0 me means the mean term x, y bar, z bar. Okay. So, I will also uh, perform the R operation here with x, y bar, z bar. Then we have more ones. So, another one is here and this is for x 1 1 1. That means the associated mean term here is x y z. Okay. So, finally, a third term will come in f 1 and that is x y z. Okay. So, here uh, this uh, truth table is represented algebraically 
I mean the function f1 which was described in this truth table was written algebraically. Okay. If you write the truth table for the same function f1, you will find the same truth table. Okay. And then I can also represent this f1 as f1 is simply, it is what? It is m1. If I write the mean term, symbols of the mean term, then it is m1. Then what about this m4? Then m7. Okay. So, f1 is simply m1 plus f4 plus m7, where m1, m4 and m7 are mean terms. Okay, different mean terms. And then I can alternatively, I can also write this f1 in this manner, f1 is summation of sum of the mean terms 1, 4 and 7. Okay. If 1, 4 and 7 in this manner are given, then basically it simply means that we have uh, 3 mean terms, okay, 1, 4 and 7 which are actually referring the output 1. Okay. Is it clear to all of you? Then for F2, let us do the same exercise for F2. For F2 you see that here we have a 1. Okay. So, 1 is simply, 1 should be, I mean F2 should be written as F2 equal to the mean term is x bar y z okay f2 is x bar y z plus next one is here that correspond to 101 so 101 means x y bar z plus x y z bar plus x y x y z bar and plus x y z. Okay. It is actually z prime, but it is also referring the complement of z. Okay. And then the same function f 2, I can write here x dash y z is what? x dash y z is m 3. Is it or not? M3 plus M5 plus M6 plus M7 or alternatively I can also write this F2 in this form. F2 is summation of 3, 5, 6 and 7. Okay. Is it clear? Now, let us try to write this f1 in term of, I mean using the max terms. Okay, here this one was, rep uh, this one uh, is represented using the mean terms. Now, let us try to do, do this using, uh, 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 now uh, let us try to write this f1 using the max terms. Okay. So again, I can follow the same procedure. Let us write the complement of this F1 that is to be F1 dash. Okay. And what this F1 dash is? F1 dash means I will just note down those uh, mean terms which are giving rise to 0 in this column, in F1 column. Okay. So, x dash, y dash, z dash is causing 0 or causing 0 in this table, uh, sorry, in this column. So, the first mean term is actually x dash, y dash, z dash. Okay. Then the next one is here that is x dash, y, z dash, then x dash, y, z plus x y bar 
z y bar z plus x y z bar or x y z prime ok. F on dash is written like this f on dash x, x prime y prime z prime plus x prime y z prime plus x prime y z plus x y prime z plus x y z ok. Now you can write uh, this in terms of m j f1 dash is actually what? This is what? m 0, small m 0, then small m 2, small m 3, 5, then 7. Okay, 6, small m 6, okay. And now uh, let us try to write this f 1 by complementing this f 1 prime, okay. So, f 1 as, as you know is f 1 is f 1 prime of prime, complement of f 1 prime, okay. So, how should I write it? We can use the De Morgan's law concept. Okay, what is the De Morgan's, De Morgan's law? If you remember, we did this in previous class. If it is x y complement, then it becomes x bar plus y bar. Okay or if we have x plus y complement, then it becomes x bar dot y bar, okay. Now I can use this, here I am taking the complement of this whole function f1, f1, f1 prime, okay. Since we are taking the complement of this f1 prime, what I will get here? The first mean term which was x dash, y dash, z dash x prime y prime z prime now it becomes x plus y plus z okay x plus y plus z and this plus sign that means r operation should be replaced by and operation you see here x plus y plus is represent uh, re, uh, i mean replaced by dot r is replaced by the and operation so here I will have to put a dot and then I will look for the next term that is x plus y bar plus z then again dot I will have x plus y bar y prime plus z prime into x prime plus y plus z prime into x prime plus y prime plus z, okay. So you can see that uh, this is now suitable to pro, uh, max terms, okay. Max terms are uh, written like this, max terms x plus y plus z what does it refer? It refers capital M 0, if you recall that table, okay. So this is capital M 0. What about this? Because you see the max term means uh, this, uh, if the variable is without prime, it refers to be 0, okay. So 0, 0, 0 means M 0. Here it is 0, 1, 0 means 2 m2 okay so this is our m2 here i have m4 capital m4 m5 capital m5 then m0 m0 then m2 okay 2 plus 1 m3 m5 into 
m6 okay so please note here that this form okay this is nothing but this is our f1 we are doing the exercise for f1 only so we have two alternative forms for f1 one form is written like this m1 plus m4 plus m7 okay and another form which is written in uh, using the max terms the f1 becomes m0 m2 m3 m5 m6 and these are written utilizing the max terms so you can say here that this f1 is written in product of some form okay this was sum of product but here we have product of sum we have product of different sums okay these are the sums x plus y plus z x plus y bar plus z x y plus y bar plus z bar and then we finally perform the end operation and we write the f1 in term of we may also write the f1 in term of the max terms in this product of some forms okay so a given function can be written uh, in sum of product forms or product of some forms okay so just to summarize what we did the uh, i mean the function which was described in the truth table we represent that function in algebraic form okay using the mean terms and max terms a function can be represented using the mean terms as well as the max terms as per the procedure given okay discussed is it clear so here i would like to give you one important information if there are n variables in a function okay if there are n variable in a function or in a truth table you can say so these n variables can be used to create or make 2 to the power 2 to the power n functions okay if there are n variables then from those n variables you can write 2 to the power n mean terms okay each mean terms is responsible for two possible outputs that is either 0 or 1 so that's why the total functions which can be implemented using the n variables is 2 to the power 2 to the power n okay getting this n variable means 2 to the power n mean terms each mean terms may be responsible for 0 or 1 two states in the output okay so two function for each mean terms so therefore the total functions which can be implemented using the n variables is 2 to the power n to the 2 to the power 2 to the power n okay you can note it down get clear now uh, let's say that a table is not given to you a function is uh, given to you and it is asked to just write that function uh in uh, sum of product forms or product of some form so how how it, uh, you will do that that we are going to discuss okay a simple function for example let's say that is f equal to a plus b bar b uh, prime c or b complement c okay so i would like to tell you that a b c are variables here 
okay that function f is written in terms of three variables and now what i have to do i have to write this f using the mean terms in sum of product form okay so how should i do that represent f in sum of product forms so you can see here that each term is missing one or two variables for example the first term which is having only a that is having one variable two variables are missing those are b and c okay and similarly in the second term we have one variable a missing so how to write uh, this in sum of product form so what we will do we will utilize uh, the theorems of boolean algebra okay you know that b plus b bar is always one okay any variable if you add uh, the complement version of that variable you get one so similarly i can say that c plus c bar is also one and a plus a bar is also one okay so if i multiply this b plus b bar to any term that is not going to change the final value of that uh, particular terms is it or not so i can write here a can be replaced by since b is missing in the here so i can write a into b plus b bar okay and this is basically written as ab plus a b bar okay similarly the c variable is also missing from here so i can write here this term multiplied by c plus c bar okay and then we'll have total four terms those are a b c plus a b c complement plus a b bar c plus a b bar c bar okay is it clear so you can see that uh, we have uh, represented this first term of this function using the mean terms okay and we can do the same for uh, this second term in the second term we have only one variable a missing okay so i can multiply this b prime c by a plus a bar okay b prime c if i multiply this by a plus a bar or a plus a prime then what i get a b bar c plus a bar b bar c okay so combining all those six terms four from here and another two from here i can write this function f okay and then our f is to be a b c plus a b c bar plus a b bar c plus a b bar c bar a b bar c is there any term a b bar c we already have a b bar c okay so you know that x plus x is x so a b bar c plus a b bar c is to be a b bar c so i can remove one okay i can neglect one so this a bar b bar c is there any term no so i can write here a a bar b bar c look sometime i am using this uh, complement sometime using prime both indicates indicate the same uh, thing that is the complement of that variable okay don't get confused so finally f is written f can be written as f is nothing but this is our m7 plus this is our 
m6 small m6 plus m5 plus m4 plus m1 okay the tradition is to write uh, in reverse manner m1 plus m4 plus m5 plus m6 plus m7 okay and uh, i can also write in a different form that is f equal to summation of 1 4 5 6 7 1 4 5 6 7 like that okay is it clear so similarly we have uh, also and met a method for uh, writing a function in term uh, using the, those max terms okay just like we use here summation for max term we write the multiplication okay for example if you write the a function f in terms of using those max terms so f will be written like this f is for example if you use uh, 0 2 3 okay it may be written like this are you getting it clear hmm if i have to write the same function f using the max terms okay i can write it like this this is the similar uh, representation of product of some form okay this is for sum of product form and this is similar representation for product of some forms okay here we use a summation here we use multiplication is it clear this uh, this two representation sum of product and product of sums to all of you okay so now you can make a practice i have given uh, a function f a b c the function is written in term of three variables a b c and that is summation of 1 4 5 6 7 okay so since this is summation it means it is written in term of uh, using the mean terms what you have to do you have to write the same f using the max terms okay just try to do this write it in product of some form so you can do the same first you take the complement of this f okay complement of this f can again be written using the mean terms and uh, though there the mean terms will be 0 2 3 okay and then take the complement of the complement you will get back those uh, the function original function back so the complement of this complement of this f comp f complement or f prime gives you f and then this f is to be equal to product of 0 2 3 3 okay 0 2 3 refers here are the max terms okay these 1 4 5 6 7 where the mean terms 
0, 2, 3 are the max terms here. Okay. That means x plus y plus z, this 2 is x bar plus y plus z, then x bar plus y plus z bar. Okay. These 3 max terms are needed to represent this f, okay, to write this f in the different manner, in this manner. Okay. So, this is the procedure for conversion from uh, sum of product to product of some form. Okay. And now uh, let us start the last topic that is K map representation. Our Karnoff map ok. So, I would like to tell you that the Karnoff maps are uh, built using the squares and those squares refer the different mean terms ok. For example, if we talk about a two variable uh, system or a function which is written in terms of two variable, okay, then there will be four squares in that case. Okay. And those four squares will be built are, uh, are to be built like this. Okay. If you have four variables, then there are uh, sorry two variables then there are four four mean terms if the variables are x and y then mean terms will be written like this m0 here m1 here m2 here and m3 here getting it this is k map karnoff map for two variables okay the karnoff maps uh, will be used to simplify the Boolean expressions are logical functions. Okay, that is the ultimate aim of using this uh, Karnoff map. But here I am just uh, introducing the concepts of K map step by step. I will start from the very simple point uh, and just I will uh, go ahead by in, uh, increasing the complexity of the situations. Okay. So, first I start from two variable x and y. Two variable means as you know there will be four mean terms m0, m1, m2, m3. Alternatively, I can also uh, write in this fashion x, y, m0 is what? x prime, y prime, 0, 0. Okay. So, in place of m0, I can write here x prime, y prime. Okay. Then m, uh, then 1 that is x prime y m2 that is x y prime and then m3 this is x y. Okay. So, what you see just look at uh, this uh, table uh, this uh, look at this graph map what you see here that if you uh, for x basically this is this row represents 0 and this one represents 1. Why it is so? Because you see that in this row, all x are basically the complement of x. Okay. Look here, x is 0, that means x bar, x bar, x bar. Okay. Here x is 1, that means all x are 1, x, x. Okay. And similarly, if you look at the columns, then here we have y equal to 0, because all, I, all y's are in complement form, y bar, y bar. Similarly, for the second column, here y is 1 and what you see here y y, y in the normal form. Okay. So, this column, this row refers to be, I mean uh, is for uh, x equal to 0, this one is for x equal to 1. Similarly, the first column is y, y equal to 0 and another one is for y equal to 1. Okay. Is it clear? Now, just look at the adjacent blocks. Okay. 
adjacent block of this map. What you see that here we have x bar y bar. If I go to adjacent block, what I find x bar y. So what is this? Here I can notice that there is a change in one, only one variable. Okay, x bar y bar. X bar is as, as it is. Y is, I mean y bar is changing to y. There is change in one variable only. If I uh, move vertically in the column, then what I see? The y bar is as it is, only one variable is changed, x bar to x. Similarly here, the x remains unchanged where y varies from y bar to y. Okay. Similarly here, y is as it is, x bar to x. So when you move to adjacent blocks, what you find that there is change in only one variable. And this property we are going to utilize to utilize for minimizing the long Boolean expressions or functions. Okay. Why we can do that? Just you look here. Let me write m0 plus m1. What I see? If I write m0 plus m1, m0 as you know is x bar y bar and m1 is what? It is x bar y. Add these two. What I find? x bar common y bar plus y, y bar plus y is 1, so result is simply x bar. Okay. Just add this m0 plus m2. What you see? The two mean terms x bar, y bar is common, x, x plus x bar or simply we get y bar. y bar means what? This is y bar, you see here, y for y equal to 0. Okay. So this column represents y equal to 0, this column represents y equal to 1, this row represents x equal to 0, this represents x equal to 1. Okay. That means if two subsequent one are present, adjacent ones are present, okay, that can be minimized very easily. Okay. If the two mean terms are there, you can combine those mean terms to form, I mean uh, you see that the complexity of this equation has been reduced and we have got the equivalent value that is only x dash. Okay. Let me write uh, the two variables AND gate and R gate in KMAP form. Okay. The truth table of uh, AND gate and R gate in this form. For a simple AND, two input AND gate, if the two variables are inputs are let's say x, y, output is f, then 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 for AND gate, 1, 0, 0 and 1, 1 is 1. Okay. So what I will do? I will just find out the 1 and place that mean term in a suitable box. Okay. So this 0, 0, 0, here I have 1 and for 1 the mean term is x, y. So I will find where x, y has to be, x, y has to be here. So I will make a k map like this. This is for x, y, 0, 1, 0, 1. I will put 1 here. Okay. This refers simply x, y. Okay. Whereas for R gate, if I do the same practice for R gate, then uh, this 0, 0 remains 0, 0, 1 becomes 1, 1 and 1. Okay. Now I can place this, you see 0, 0 that is x prime, y prime, this refers here, this is 0 and other mean terms are present, only one mean term was not present that was x bar, y bar, other mean terms x bar, y, x, y, x, y bar and x, y are present. So our m2 is, m1 is present, m2 is present and m3 is present. Okay. Is it clear? Now I can make the group of the ones, you see here, I can make the group of adjacent one. So here the two ones are adjacent to each other, make a group here, another one is here, two one are here, 
I can make a group here. Okay. So these two one refers what? These two one refer x equal to one. That means x. Okay. And what about this column? This column is for y equal to one. Okay. So finally, I can write f equal to x is one plus y is one. So f is x plus y. Okay. And that is true for the R gate. You know that R gate is defined as x plus y. R gate is defined as x plus y. So what we did, we took all mean terms, put them into uh, different box, group them together, and write it f equal to x plus y. Please note that we will always try to make uh, the group of either 2, R4, R8, R16 blocks. Since it is two variable blocks, here we have opportunity of making group of only two adjacent blocks. Okay, of either this, 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 or this, this. No diagonal movement is possible here. Okay, so when you make the group of adjacent uh, ad adjacent blocks, either you will take this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. Okay, and you can check what is the true for that. For example, for this column, if there is one in this column and this column, and you make a group of these two one, then you need to simply write x bar. This refers x bar. Okay. If the one are here, here and here, then you simply write what x. Is it or not? For example. Let us say that we have one here, one here, and one here. Okay. So, how we shall make a group? These two one, I can make a group of these two one, and these two one refers simply y bar. Okay. So, I will write f equal to y bar plus these two. So, it is simply x here. So, y bar plus x. Okay. So, from from truth table or from the sum of products representation, you find the one, put them in this box, suitable box, then make a group of ones adjacent one and simplify the given Boolean function in this manner. Okay. If there is all one, then what it will represent? All blocks are filled by one. Then, then what about f? Then f is one. Okay, is it or not? Just look at the truth table. If I put one for all possible combination, if for the zero zero input output is one, zero one, one, one zero one, one 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 means the function f out is simply one. Okay, so if one is there in all groups, in all blocks, we will make a group of all 4 1 and all 4 1 gives us f equal to 1. Okay. So, similarly, we will uh, develop the concept for 2, uh, uh, just like we did it for 2 variables, we will do it for 3 variables and 4 variables in the next class. Okay. Thank you.